what are the other cities that come to rival uh, Chang'an? Well, I think the big change, and, and we have wonderful illustrations of this, because if we look at a map of Chang'an, we can see that grid layout. 10th century, Tang Empire falls apart. The south breaks into multiple states. The north is a succession of, of short-lived dynasties. And then when it's reunified under the Song dynasty at the end of the 10th century, the Song chooses as its capital not a Chang'an. It chooses a commercial city called Kaifeng on a canal close to the Yellow River, and it makes its capital there. And now we're east of the passes. We're on the western part of the North China Plain, and it's a commercial center. And, and all the illustrations we have of it, and all the discussion and the accounts of the city that we have from the time describe it as a commercial center, as a place that's not only an administrative center, but also a center of commerce. And it's at that moment that we start to see the development of, let's say, hierarchies of cities taking place, where we have a number of cities, Xuzhou, Yangzhou, Hangzhou, cities in the south, that have become major cities as well. Now, there's one piece of infrastructure that many of these cities have in common, right, which is the Grand Canal, which seems to play a role in, in many of their histories, right? S so that Grand Canal that links the prosperous and fertile southeast with the northern capital is done under the Sui dynasty, so back in the end of the 6th century. It continues on through the Song. Uh, then, after a, a conquest, it, it's dilapidated and has to be restored again. But it's a very important, it's a very important route. And the, the Grand Canal and the Yangtze River the shift of the center of population to the south, and gradually the shift of the center of commercial wealth to the south is absolutely essential to the story. One thing that is somewhat unusual about, your, about the Kaifeng story is that it's quite often in the West that great political cities will become commercial cities. Think about London, uh -huh. for example. Uh, it's less common uh, that you have a city that rises first as a commercial hub and then becomes a political city on, right. on top of it. And remains a commercial city at the same time. So what's different in the way that we look at Kaifeng? How does it feel different? And, and how do you see the fact that it's originally a commercial city instead of a, a political city from the top down? Well, I, they, they, don't, they can't restore the Tang system of wards or fang with walls around them. Mm -hmm. They no longer, I think, have the same commitment to the notion of a unified hierarchy of mm -hmm. status, power, wealth, culture, religion. There is, it's still, Kaifeng is still a case where you, you see, s tend to see elites congregate, mm -hmm. the, the political leaders, cultural leaders. In but particular neighborhoods? In particular no, areas. no, it's just, it just, just congregating there. But in fact, it's now spread out to other cities as well. Mm -hmm. and one of the phenomena we see is that when people retire, when leading officials, leading cultural figures retire, where do they move? In the Tang, they moved to the capital, in the capital corridor. In the Sung, all over the place. They're no longer, there's no longer the same commitment to the capital as the center of culture. And there's something else that happens. And we actually have really good evidence from 1077. What that map shows is that the economic hierarchy and the administrative hierarchy from the capital all the way down to the county is started to diverge. And you have market towns that have more commercial tax coming in than the county seat. You have county seats that have more commercial tax coming in than the prefectural seat. So there's no longer this neat Tang hierarchy or the imagined hierarchy of Tang where the economy is subordinate to the administration. Now we have a world in which commerce is independent of politics and where, in fact, what the great thing about the Song Dynasty is they learned how to tax the economy. So more of its wealth is now coming in, more of its revenue is now coming in from commerce than from agricultural tax.